Hello lovelies, my name's Leslie, this is the Not Quite Enough Distance vlog, how are we? Hope everyone's okay. Uh, where are we? It's Tuesday, I'm at the crematorium again. Um, haven't been so well, yesterday wasn't feeling very well at all. Better today, thankfully. Um, yeah, so just very kind of low energy. Um, slept a lot yesterday. <laughs> and uh, have an early night and feel better for a lot of sleep, which is always a good thing, so. Hey-ho. I hope everyone's okay. It's um, quite mild. Yes, not sure what the weather's doing at the moment, but it's not doing much. I've got a ceremony every day this week, so um, keeping busy. But apart from that, just one Zoom call with a family this afternoon and then that needs to be written this week. But apart from that, that's all I've got because I'm going to be off for a couple of weeks. So that will be good. Lots of crafting time. And if the weather stays mild like this, hopefully visiting family members in their gardens. It's legal from Monday, so that's what we're going for. Still Tuesday. Had to cut it short earlier. People were around. And they don't know that I'm not just kind of having a chat with someone, but I feel very self-conscious recording in the car if there are folks around. So, so yeah, still Tuesday the 23rd. So it's a year to the day that the UK went into lockdown for the first time, which is kind of weird. I keep calling 2020 the year that didn't happen because that's what it feels like. <laughs> there was um, a minute silence at midday to remember all those lost, not just of COVID, but but all those lost during the last year. Because often people weren't able to say goodbye or to attend ceremonies. So it was slightly odd that I was sitting in the crematorium car park for that minute, but it felt important to, to mark it. I don't know how widely marked it was, but there we go. Sorry, I'm always on the doom and gloom. A, I need a holiday. Oh, I'm having one next week. How lovely. B, my username is knitting or death. There's kind of a clue in that really, isn't there? <laughs> oh, goodness. So I am wearing my Gabrielle, which is Gabrielle by Layla Raven. And I keep wondering, do I make another? Because I really enjoyed making it. But do I want two sweaters basically the same? Or do I take the numbers from this but put a different pattern, have a lace pattern at the front but something different? Oh, so many important questions to be answered. <laughs> oh dear. Yes, yeah, so I have a ceremony every day this week. Uh, yesterday was not feeling well at all. Today trying to take it a bit easier um really grateful that i haven't got a huge amount you know if this had been a month ago when i just had work after work after work that would have been very difficult i have a zoom call in about 10 minutes and um so they'll be writing up to do after that but that can be done tomorrow it's not a problem and yeah just trying to look after myself a bit and take things a bit easy so I don't overexert uh, a body that is not feeling 100%. No. I'm okay. It was just one of those weird uh, things. So, <sighs> Getting old, dear. Getting old. I have very nearly finished a sweater that I've been working on for a long, long time. This is the Stillness pattern was very kindly given to me and this is the the sweater that I work on when I'm checking stuff on screen I'm reading things aloud and I now have one sleeve done one sleeve nearly done is that the same length you know when you get close to the end and you think am I rushing at this and it's all going horribly wrong no it's fine it's fine it's good um and then just the neckband to do so that shouldn't take too long and this is a variety of yarns um I'm 
if I've finished it by the weekend, I'll talk about it in the podcast. If not, I'll talk about it next month when it's finished. Lovely and soft variety of merino type yarns, which means it'll pill like anything, but I have a gleaner. I'm just bragging now, I know. Yeah, so those are kind of crafty things I'm working on at the moment. It's as exciting as it gets. I have another cowl in the uh, in here. Just need to get it into here and yarn and stuff. And once I've finished that sweater, then I will start on the one using my plied yarn from the Magic Ball and that grey blue clay. So lots of plans and hopefully coming up bit of time to execute them. Yeah. Guess what? I finished my sweater. <laughs> yes, it is done. It was finished during knit night on Wednesday evening. I had a lot of ends to weave in, but I got most of them woven in during knit night after finishing the, the neckband, which was the last knitted piece. So it is done. This is The Stillness by Elizabeth Sullivan. And I will talk all about it on the Month End podcast, which will go up probably tomorrow. Should be tomorrow. It might be Sunday, but should be tomorrow. So, yeah, I'm really pleased with it. The yarns all have soft, squishy fibres. There's a lot of merino in this sweater. And it just feels really cosy and nice and warm. And I like it very much. So I will give all the deets, including, spoiler, no modifications. Oh, I know. Yes, all the deets to follow. Cheers. Hello, lovely people. It's Friday. Possibly a bit demob happy. Could, could be. <laughs> Hope you're all okay. Firstly, thank you to everyone and apologies to those I confused last week. But thank you to everyone who told me that the clocks are going forward this weekend, not last weekend. Last weekend we had to fill out our census in the UK. Um, but this weekend it's the clocks forward. Of course it is. It's the last weekend in March. I should know this stuff. I've been an adult for a long time. I mean, not a grown-up, but an adult technically. So, hey-ho. Um, currently working on a little cowl. This is using the hand spun gradient that I did a few months ago. And I've just got a small cowl. It's a Mobius, Mobius Cowston. Cowston? Have I moved west? I've got, I've got relatives sound like that. <laughs> yes, I'm... <laughs> Mobius cast on or cast on depending on which part of the UK you're from or the world or stop talking Leslie yes it's one of those anyway um, I'm doing it that way and it's just a moss stitch seed stitch very simple um, doing it that way because I'd like the cowl to start off dark in the middle and then get lighter uh, as it goes to the edges also by doing it this way I, if it is quite narrow, because I'm not sure how much this is going to produce, I've got some white, um, sport weight yarn that I could put in the edges if I need to. So that's my cunning plan. Yes, it's Friday, I have a, s and then the phone rang. Ah, oh, work never ends. <laughs> Can't remember what I was saying. Anyway, clocks go forward this weekend, census last weekend, making a cowl. Mm. So, <laughs> it was an odd thing. I was driving around the other day and I've spent so little time in my hometown apart from my house or going to work. And I was stopped in traffic. I had to drop himself off somewhere. And I was stopped in traffic and I noticed there was this lovely little community herb garden. So some folks have just set this up for people to come and help themselves. And I just thought that was a really lovely thing. So yes, that was all a bit gorgeous. <sighs> so Friday, the sun is shining. Oh, the clouds look a bit grey, but the sun is shining. Um, 
one ceremony today thanks to that phone call I've just had a phone call to make when I get back and um, then we're, we're off work for two weeks and uh, finding lots of other things to do so that will be that will be good it's welcome um, I'll stop talking about it now <laughs> People who are still struggling on at work are thinking, yeah, right, let's shut up. So, <laughs> um, so this weekend I'll be putting the podcast up and be doing the uh, the giveaways. Just a, a quick note on that. A couple of things I've noticed. Um, just a reminder that it is an accessory make along. Um, some people have been putting, there seem to be some kind of baby garments and that sort of thing in there. Um, even though it's a small item because it's for a baby, you've got to have boundaries somewhere and ours is accessory. So, um, so those sort of things I'm afraid won't be eligible. And also a quick reminder that each post, so each email you send me or each post on Ravelry is... Um, an entry so if you've made more than one thing please do put them as separate posts so that you're then pulled into the the drawer on each on each post number that would be fab thank you oh and the other thing is uh, do make sure you're a member of the the group and this applies to Kellyanne's um, drawer as well so make sure you're a member of the group on Ravelry if, if you're a Ravelry user and um, that you're a, a subscriber to the podcast. Talking of subscribers, I mentioned last week there seemed to be some new subscribers, so thank you so much for finding me and joining me. And as people join, in my head, I assume everyone knows everything about my life I've ever said, because obviously I'm fascinating. I am joking when I say things like that. Um, but some folks have asked some questions that... Um, reminded me that some things need explaining. So Linda asked what sort of ceremonies I do and what I'm doing at the crematorium. And Corinne asked how I became a celebrant. Now, some of you lovely people who've been around a while know all this stuff because you've heard it before. So if that's the case um, and you want to say so long, farewell, auf Wiedersehen, goodbye, absolutely understand and I'll see you next week for the podcast no next week for the vlog and tomorrow for the podcast so thank you very much for being here if you have heard it before and you want to hear it again or you haven't heard it before sit comfortably and I will tell you a tale <laughs> to answer Linda's question I am a funeral celebrant so I conduct funerals these are largely secular. Um, I started off in the humanist tradition and they were completely secular funerals, so no prayers, no hymns. As time has gone on, for various reasons, um, I moved away. I'm, I'm still a member of the Humanist Association. I'm no longer one of their celebrants. Um, I used to train for them but have decided to, to leave and to be an independent. So that means that the ceremonies I have, some are hum purely humanist, others are more kind of general. And there are a lot of people that they don't necessarily have a faith themselves, but they know that there will be people in the congregation who would appreciate a prayer. So, you know, a prayer may be included. I've always been on the kind of liberal fringes of the, the humanist side of things. Um, so this was just really an extension of that. And this really isn't the time for a a long kind of conversation. If people are grieving and they say to me things like, and I've genuinely heard this said, well, the Lord's Prayer is not really that religious, is it? They're grieving. It's not a time to really have that conversation. <laughs> So you just say, that's what you want, that's what you'll have. Um, there are, you know, there are kind of limits to what I feel comfortable doing, but largely people just want a nod to religion for those in the congregation who have a faith. Corinne asked how I got into it. When I was 
uh, approaching 40, my mother died. And approaching 40 and the loss of a parent are both things that make you think, what am I doing with my life? And what I was doing with my life at that point was invoice finance, which I'd been doing on and off for about 20 years. Um, and, you know, nothing wrong with it, but it didn't feel... I didn't have a passion for it. And, yeah, that's probably the best way to describe it. Uh, didn't have a passion for it. It didn't feel to me like I was doing good in the world by working in invoice finance. Purely personal response to it. So these are things that make me sort of question what's going on. Then about four or five months after my mother died, uh, a close friend, her husband died very suddenly and she was getting ready to to arrange the funeral and was quite anxious about meeting the minister that had been suggested because my friend does have a faith but her husband didn't have one so she'd wanted that nod to religion but she didn't want a sermon and a very hellfire and brimstone type of funeral and because she's my friend and I love her and I wanted to make her feel better I said well if he's horrible I'll do it thankfully that didn't come to pass <laughs> And I say thankfully because I would have gone into this situation completely unprepared, having had no training, no real sense of what would be needed from the celebrant's point of view. And also with the emotion of it being a friend and the friend's husband. You know, this is someone we've spent Christmases with. and So um, it would have been an absolute disaster and it would have probably stopped me going to any other funerals, let alone thinking about conducting them. So thankfully, the minister who'd been suggested turned out to be the perfect suggestion. He was an absolute sweetie. He had the nod to religion, but he concentrated on the life of the person. And it was a really well done ceremony and just what my friend wanted. But that kind of planted a seed and a few days after I'd said this to her, I, I sort of woke up with the thought, I'd quite like to do that. Now I had been to some humanist funerals and been really impressed by them. Early funerals I'd been to had all been uh, conducted by religious ministers and I'm not a religious person. So they had felt a bit like going through the motions rather than anything more meaningful. But the the secular, the humanist ceremonies I'd been to really made an impact. And I came away feeling very moved by them, um, uplifted by them in a good, you know, in a, <laughs> you can come away from a funeral feeling uplifted because you're glad you've known someone. It's about the, the value of life and, and all of that. So I um, started investigating with the British Humanist Association and that was uh, the organisation with which I trained. I had to wait for a while, there weren't vacancies in my geographical area and that was actually quite a good thing because I'd made this decision fairly quickly and the fact that I had to wait and I was really disappointed by that and I kept sort of emailing them every now and again saying still here still keen because I didn't want to be in a situation where I kind of fell off anyone's radar. It really proved to me how much I wanted to do this. Um, so that was a good thing having that weight. Um, yeah so I trained it was the training has changed since then but it was over three months there was some residential I had a mentor, so I would go with her to visit families, write ceremonies for her to review, um, attend ceremonies to, to understand how it all kind of works. And like I say, the residential staff, so you're conducting ceremonies and getting a, a good insight on the, the workings of a crematorium and that sort of thing. 
and that was just coming up actually for 13 years ago I think April 2008 yeah was my first ceremony and we're coming up to April 2021 so <laughs> wow yeah <laughs> So that's, that was how I became a celebrant. Uh, after I'd been doing it a couple of years, I uh, applied to be a trainer. So I have trained a few funeral celebrants as well. And I'd stopped training because my own workload was getting quite high. Uh, quite high and I didn't want to do a half-hearted job at anything. I always say it's somewhere it's a a role that you you really got to be present you can't phone it in you've got to be there full on and anything there, there are no shortcuts it takes a certain amount of time I mean each ceremony is probably about 10 hours in total that's an average by the time you've met the family written phone call, phone calls emails preparation taking the ceremony itself, admin afterwards. There aren't many shortcuts and you really just have to put the time in. So if you do more ceremonies, you take more hours. There's no economy of scale in this. So I had to stop training because of time constraints because it's another, you know, when you're training someone, you've also got to be very present and dedicate the time to it. And I just wasn't in a position to be able to do that. Uh, yeah, so that's my uh, life as a celebrant. I've done over 2,000 ceremonies. Uh, <laughs> and please don't ask me to remember them all. Some stick in the mind. Most stick in the mind for good reasons. Some stick in the mind for reasons. I haven't made any major disasters. A few mistakes have been made along the way, you know, in 13 years and that many ceremonies. It's going to go wrong every now and again, but nothing major. And yeah, touch wood, that continues. <laughs> I also trained for a while to conduct weddings and namings. The, the law around weddings in the UK, or certainly in England and Wales, is... Uh, very precise it's to do with the queen being the head of the church and the head of the state so to be a non-religious wedding it's got to be done by a licensed registrar in a licensed building and la 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 so the weddings that I've done were more like blessings than those and um, I also did naming ceremonies uh, which are like christenings or baptisms for people who don't want a religious ceremony so it's still getting people to make commitments to the child the parents the grandparents the people who are taking on the role of godparents if you like so um you know they're making promises to the children and that could be quite a nice thing but i have for the last few years just stuck to funerals partly because of time constraints and mostly because i prefer them um, the weddings and the namings if it's for someone you know then it's lovely and you're part of their family celebration otherwise it's just a really great way to ruin your Saturday <laughs> so <laughs> excuse me yeah so thank you for asking those questions and that's what I do and how I came to be doing it so there you go so thank you all for for watching for being here for liking for commenting for subscribing for all the things that you lovely people do hope you're okay i hope that where you are things aren't too bad covid wise um a lot of places in europe are locking down again please stay safe stay well keep Keep yourself as mentally well as you can be because this is a long haul. And thank you for being here and sharing this little corner of the internet with me. It really is appreciated. I'll see you next week for the vlog 
and tomorrow or possibly Sunday for the podcast. But thanks very much, everyone. You take care. Bye-bye.